All right, I'm going to do my best to make sure that you guys can copy down all these stats um, for this Friday's big battle. Let me get all these paints out of the way. Apologize for that. And I'm going to zoom in on this so you guys can see it. And I'll just run it off real quick. Move, 10 inches, wounds, 7, bravery, 9, 3 plus save, tempos hammer, range 2, attacks 3, 2 hit 3 plus, to wound 2 plus, ren minus 1, damage d3. The Dracoth's Claws of Fangs, this is for the Lord uh, Celestin and Dracoth, I hope I got that down. Um, he has a range of 1 inch, 3 attacks, 3 plus to hit, 3's to wound, minus 1, and 1 damage. And on the bottom there, you guys, if you pause it, you'll be able to see the damage that he is able to do and some of the powers that he has. And the command ability. Let's zoom in on that a little bit. And we'll make sure that we have that. There we go. Next, we're going to talk about... The Lord, Relector, that's who Sam will have. And let's take a look at his stats real quick. Move, four, wounds, five, three plus save, bravery. He uses a relic hammer. hammer. It has a range of one, attacks four. To hit, three plus, to wound, three plus, minus one rend, one damage. And let's zoom out for his abilities. And we'll zoom in for those two abilities. I'll leave it on there for a second so you guys can uh, hopefully get it all down. Now, let me zoom out a little bit so it's all there. Now, as we're playing this, I will be doing a walkthrough of all the rules. Um, I'll explain it before the game, and that should help out a lot. All right, now this one's going to be a little tough. So we're going to zoom out. The prosecutor, uh, right there, as you can see. And just let me zoom in a bit so I can hold the page. There we go. All right, let's start here. Those are those nice prosecutors that he did. He did a great job with those. All right, movement 12, wounds 2, force plus save, 6 bravery, celestial hammers, range of 18 inches, 2 attacks, plus 4 to hit, plus 4 to win, uh, wound, no ren, 1 damage. The celestial hammers, when you get up close, 1 inch range, 2 attacks. Plus three to hit, plus three to wound, one damage. And let's take a look at the abilities down here. Herald of the Righteousness. Celestial Hammers. I hope this all this information helps out. Fly. Prosecutors can fly. Of course they can. Celestial Hammers, you can't re-roll hits, re-roll hits rolls of one for models of, from that unit. Oh, man, that's going to be nasty. i got a plan for him, though. This guy is not going to like it. All right, the Retro Buters. These are the other guys that he did. Very nice job he did. So let's take a look at it. Four-inch move, three wounds. 4 plus save, 7 bravely, bravery, lightning hammer, range 1, 2 attacks, to hit, plus 3, to wound, plus 3, minus 1 ren, and 2 damage. And then let's take a look at the abilities. There we go. Blast 2 ashes. Oh man, I'm going to have a tough time with these guys. That mortal wound thing is just nasty. You know I'm just going to send 
everybody in to just demolish these guys. Alright, and then of course, the Liberators, the last of his army. These he has 10 of. And it's move, 5 inches, wounds, 2, 4 plus save, 6 bravery. Uh, they will have war hammers. They do not have grand hammers. So that's the only thing that we're going to count on here. 1 inch, 2 attacks, plus 4 to hit, plus 3 to wound, and they do 1 damage. Alright, Liberator Prime, which is their leader. Their abil abilities, paired weapons, lay low the tyrants, Sigmar shields. Let's back out so you guys can copy this down if you guys want to. Remember, uh, I'm putting this all up so you guys can actually, uh, if you are interested, you can copy down these stats and follow along on Friday as we're doing the live playthrough. All right, now to my army, the guys that count. Yes, the mighty Lord of Corn. Let's see what this guy got. He moves five. He has six wounds, nine bravery, and a three plus save. He has the Axe of Corn. And let's take a look at that thing. One inch range, three attacks, plus three to hit, plus three to wound, minus one rend, and D3 damage. The Flesh Hound Blood Claws. One inch range, four attacks, plus three to hit, plus four to wound, one damage. And let's take a look at this building. Is See what he doesn't realize? I'm going to go in for his commander, try to get hits on him. See, I'm going to try to end this early. Because if I get that Axe of Corn, and if on a roll of five or higher, the axe cleaves a vent in the fra fabric of reality, hurling its victim to the corn realm. The model being rolled for is slain. Slain, I tell you. If I can do that to his commander, game over, baby. He doesn't even know it's coming. Yes. So here's all the command abilities. If you guys have any questions afterwards, be free to email me and I will be more than happy to get this stuff up for you guys. The blood secretor. This guy's going to be key. Very, very key in, in my approach. So let's take a look at him. Let me just zoom in here. Straighten that out for you. Move. Four plus. Wounds. Five. Save, 3+, plus Bravery, 9. His Axe, 1 inch, 4 attacks, 3+, plus 3+, plus minus 1, 1 damage. It's going to be key, but the key here is the Rage of Corn. Okay, any free, any, anybody within range gets an extra attack, so if I can get some of my guys within 18 inches I can get an extra attack and really do some nasty things to them but they have to have the corn name into them so if that blood secretor is next to the Lord corn they will both will get an extra hit which means that I will get an extra shot to send his boy into the realm of corn The Blood Stoker, another key component to my army. Let's see what he does. He moves six. He has five wounds, four plus save, eight bra bravery. He has a torture blade, one inch, three attacks, three to hit, plus three to wound, one damage. Blood Whip, three inches, three attacks, three to hit, four plus four to wound, one damage. But the key is the Whip of Fury. In my hero phase, pick one friendly unit with the corn keyword that is within 12 inches of this model. Until your next hero phase, you can add 3 inches to all run and charge rolls for that unit and can reroll wounds, uh, reroll wound rolls of 1 for models from that unit. 
So that is like real key for my guys. Really to get them going. My core gath. This bad boy. He's really got to get in there and he's got to take out those retributors. And he's pretty nasty with eight wounds. He's got a movement of six, eight wounds, four plus save, bravery of six. His missile weapon is range six inches, three attacks, plus three to hit, to wound plus four, damage one, claw and fangs, range of one inch, five attacks, plus three, plus three, minus one ren, and minus one damage. But here's the thing that really gets him going is he is a horrific predator. If, if this model inflicts damage on one or more enemy units in the combat phase, then you must subtract one from the bravery of all enemy units within 12 inches of this unit in the battle shock phase. Take care of heads. If the, if the attacks made by this unit in the combat phase results in one or more enemy models being slain, then you can heal wounds, one wound suffered by a model from this unit. So this guy can heal himself up as he is throwing a beating on Sam. I think that's really going to help us out. Now our blood warriors. This These guys are, are, are kind of like the retributors. They really got to do their job. So let's take a look at them. Movement of five, two wounds, four plus, uh, six bravery. They have a gore axe, which is range one, two attacks, plus three to hit, plus four to wound, one damage. But it's their abilities that are really going to help me. Champion of Chaos is the Chaos Champion. The Chaos Champion makes three attacks rather than two. And you can see no respite and gore fists. If you just freeze that and want to jot it down, that would be good. Each time you make a successful save roll for a model from this unit and the attacking unit is within one inch of this unit, roll a dice for each roll of a six. The attacking unit suffers one mortal wound after all of its attacks have been made. How do you like that? That might be able to take these guys out. That means that you cannot save on a mortal wound. And my cannon father, the Blood Reavers. These guys are going to have to get in there, but they've got to take out at least one unit before they die. They have a movement of six. They only have one wound. They have a bravery of five. And the worst part about it is they have no save. So they've got to get in there, and they have got to kick booty. They have a range of one inch, one attack, plus four to hit, plus four to wound, no ren, but they do one damage. Now the Chieftain can make, in this unit, makes two attacks rather than one. The Icon Bearer adds one to the bravery of all the, the models, so it's actually a six. The Horn Blower, if the unit includes one or more Horn Blowers, add one to its run and charge rolls. Abilities, Frenzy Devotion. If this unit is within 12 inches of a model with chaos or totem keywords, when it is selected to attack, all models in this unit have two attacks rather than one. So that's 20 models with two attacks. That's 40 shots. That's what we want. And the Chieftain has three, so that, that's actually 42. So that's going to be huge. Reavers. Reaver Blades can reroll hits, can reroll hit rolls of one for models from this unit. So if we roll one, we get to reroll those. So we've got a chance to get that four a few times and really do some damage and really put the hurt on Tom, uh, not Tom, uh, Sam if we can. So that is the entire two armies. Now we're going to go to the back here and we're going to take a look at the War Scrolls. These are the tree people. That's a that's another story. The war store war battalions and and Sam is going to be using the Thunderstrike Brotherhood. And down here, it gives you everything that's in that box set. 
And there's the abilities that you have. You have Brother in Arms, Lightning Strike. This is what you're going to be able to use and do and play and get into the battle. Very interesting situation there, my friends. And then, for me, I'm going to be running the Gore Blade Warband. And here's the abilities that I have. You can re-roll charge rolls for units from this War Scroll Battalion. If another unit from a War Scroll Battalion has made a successful charge earlier in the phase, corn care not whence the blood flows. If a unit, friend or flow, is wiped out during combat phase, you can add one to the attack characteristics of all melee weapons used by units from this War Scroll Battalion for the remainder of that combat phase. So that can be very, very huge for me. So let's hope that I can actually get to use that. So there we go. That's everything that we've got. That's everything all set, explaining it, and all put into perspective for you guys. Um, I'll tell you, this big book here, it is definitely worth getting your hands on. It gives you all kinds of different scenarios. We're going to try to pick one. I think we're going to simplify everything for this. And we're just going to have a lot of fun. And I think you guys are really going to be surprised at how much that you can really enjoy um, this game. This is a pretty good game. Uh, there we go. Another Blood Rage I got to do. And um, if you just want to keep it to the box set, you'll find that, that it is worth every bit of its money. You get three hobbies in one, from model building, to painting, to just playing a pretty good board game. Alright, so I think you guys have everything that you need for when Sam and I go at it. We'll see you guys Friday at 10 a.m. And uh, I hope this video helps. Thank you.